Hey guys, welcome back to Team H. Uh, so recently I uploaded a video uh, regarding the release of Monster Hunter World Iceborne, which is its first large expansion. Now, associated with the release of Monster Hunter World Iceborne were a few performance issues, or rather, uh, a large number of people who were affected by high CPU usage, notably with uh, quad-core processors, where you'd see usage at times go up to 100% and make it more or less unplayable for uh, a lot of people. Now this isn't the case with everybody, but it has been brought to my attention that not only is it people who own and installed Monster Hunter World Iceborne, but it's also users with the base game that are now facing this issue when Iceborne dropped. So I've been told by others and by other players, uh, other users of just the base game, that the issues actually happen to be an update that dropped during the release of Monster Hunter Iceborne on the PC, and this update was dropped for both the base game and users of the DLC, or players of the DLC as well. So it, not only does it affect people who own and installed Iceborne as I originally thought, but it also affects the users of the base game. Now, due to this, I've decided to make a video, and I'm sure most of you already have looked up methods on how to fix uh, your, your CPU usage in the game. But for those of you who haven't, I've decided to make a little bit of a, an informational video. Now it's not much, I'm only going to show you like three little methods here, uh, most of which you might have already tried, but in the event that you haven't, I'm hoping this can help out at least just a little bit to make the game a bit more playable. So first, for anyone running Windows 10, what I'm going to have you guys do is you're going to come down here, you're going to go into options, you're going to click on display. Uh, now, this option here, Activate DirectX 12 API, I have it on currently, but most of you will likely have it off by default. So note down here, um, I'll select it here, note down here that enabling DirectX 12 allows for higher graphical performance, but it requires Windows 10 or higher. And you know, the game will restart, and when you activate it, it'll have to restart the entire game, reload up with DirectX 12 enabled. Now. I'll show a comparison a little bit later on. I do have uh, the side-by-sides kind of lined up, but from my experience when I was running it, and I'll again, I'll show the comparison, uh, we've been seeing uh, between 10 to 20, but most of the time 10% less CPU usage than what I was running at on DirectX 11, or when DirectX 12 was disabled. Which is, you know, not huge, but it's enough to make a difference, in my opinion. Uh, but another thing I wanted to bring your attention to is the frame rate here. So in the last video, I talked about frame rate capping. So there's a lot of ways you can do this, but there's also an option in game. And I'll just toggle it very quickly to show you guys here. So we'll go from 60 to 30, and you'll see my frame rate drop down to 30. Now you'll notice, like I said, there's a little bit of stuttering. Obviously, you're playing at 30 frames per second now. So it's not incredible, but it does cut down the CPU usage. You might have seen it here go from a, a pretty high amount to a lower amount, but we'll test it in game as well. Um, but what I'm going to use instead of this is I'm going to use MSI Afterburner and Rivetuner Statistics Server, which I'm going to include uh, links for downloads if you want to try it yourself in the description. And it should hopefully help you a little bit with the gameplay. So we'll get into it, we'll, um, we'll load some of the settings here, and um, we'll see what we can do in terms of a uh, little bit of benchmarking. Now, you might see a big performance upgrade from this, or you might not. Uh, again, uh, it's up to you to try different things and hopefully one of these things work for you. I'm not providing a surefire way of at least, you know, making it run better. I'd like to, but I can't tell you for sure that this will work for you, but I can tell you that it has changed certain things for me. Even though I wasn't having too many issues before, uh, notably my CPU is running a bit better uh, with the game itself.
we'll hop right in here. I want to see what I changed in terms of uh, display settings. Because oh, okay, see, now I turned DX12 off. Uh, I must have done it by mistake while I was toggling. But look at the CPU usage. You might be able to tell uh, from earlier on in the video that it's a little bit different. So I'm going to toggle it on. And I'm going to reset the, um, the settings here. Of course, it's going to ask you to restart again. So um, I do have some good news as well, and I'll get to that at the end of the video. But while we're loading up this game, I may as well talk about it, is that Capcom has officially announced on Steam uh, that they're very aware of the problem with the high CPU usage for some users, and that they're going to be releasing a patch fairly shortly. Now, I don't have a specific timeline. They don't tell you, but they do say that um, in the next few days, we should be seeing a patch to address the high CPU usage for those of you who the game are unplayable with. Now we'll hop right in here with DirectX 12 enabled. There we go. I do notice as well that the game runs a bit faster since I've used DirectX 12. Now I don't know if this is something that's with everybody, but for me anyways it has made a difference. But please do remember that if you aren't running Windows 10, don't enable it. I don't even know if it's going to be an option, it may be blanked out but it's specifically for people who are running Windows 10. Now, I have heard from some users, I don't know their specifications, but I have heard that there. it also causes or can cause crashes. Um, so just be wary while you're running it. And um, if it crashes once, you can try it again. But uh, if it crashes a couple other times there, don't bother with it. It's not worth the hassle truthfully um, it's just a temporary fix really until that patch comes out so as you can see here running up and down just the uh, the main portion of Estera we're reaching up to 76 75 percent CPU usage at times so what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to tab out I'm going to well, you guys would end up doing this. You'd type in MSI in the search bar, MSI Afterburner. You'd click on it, you'd run it. Mine's already open, I may as well just open it. So here's your MSI Afterburner. Here's your Rivet Tuner Statistics Server. So what you do with this is there's a frame rate cap. I have it at uh, 200 right now. Um, obviously the game is set at 60, so I'm still going to max out at 60. But tweaking from here I find is a little bit better. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tweak it to 30, which is what I told you guys maybe to try. Um, so we're going to get back into the game here. There we go. Now you see at 30%, CPU usage overall is currently at around 50, and it's kind of hovering at around 50 overall for all the cores here. So already, we haven't seen anything near 70. We've seen almost, it's almost a 20% drop from what it was. So we were hitting roughly 70, 70, so up to 70-75% uh, at times. So, oh, there's that uh, infamous disconnection uh, error, but um, that may not be related to Monster Hunter World. Truthfully, I have a rough internet connection. We run on satellites, so you can imagine how that is. Anywho, you can see right now the CPU usage is... Uh, oh, we hit a 60 there, but the CPU usage for the most part is hovering around 50, which is great. It's a, it's a much better improvement over the 70-75 that we were seeing at times. So that's at 30 frames. Now if you aren't completely comfortable in saying, oh, I think I could do a little bit better than 30 frames, by all means, we can tweak it. So we'll go back here, let's say 40, we'll try 40. We'll set it to 40, and you'll see the frames go up to 40 over here. So let's take a look. So now we're 55, 56 currently overall, climbing to 60, climbing to 60, but still, we're not hitting anywhere near 70. I don't even know if we'll hit mid-60s, so still, that's about a 10 to 15% decrease at 40 frames, which is better than 30, right? But it is still a significant enough decrease in CPU usage. So, you know what? That's not so bad. Again, you can play with it however you want it, right? You can set it to whatever with Rivetuna statistics, you're not just limited to 30, you can set it to 40, 50, uh, 
I don't know, 35 even. But we'll just set it back to what it was for me, which was 200 by default. And you'll see it'll go up again. We'll go up to 60 frames per second here. And you'll see the CPU usage right away. Like right off the bat, we were at 72 overall. And now we're kind of hovering around the mid 60s to 70s. Yeah, 74, 72, 70. So we're back up there with, at 60 frames per second. Now you can just see in terms of difference that it did make a decent amount of difference. Up, up to 20% uh, at times, which is nice. But to be honest, that's about it uh, in terms of performance gains anyways. At, at 30 frames per second we saw up to 20% decrease, which is good. It may make the game playable for you. Again, you'd have to try it yourself. Now, I have heard of people underclocking their CPU, but in my opinion, I simply wouldn't do it. The reason being is because most of the time when you're underclocking your CPU is because it's getting too hot. Now, it may be the case, maybe it's running really hot for you guys, but 58 degrees isn't crazy hot for me. Uh, I am running a Ryzen. I'll list my, my specs in the description as well. But um, 58 degrees, no reason for concern. There's no reason to underclock. Uh, underclocking, basically what it is for those of you who don't know, is just decreasing the voltage. Um, and this in terms reduces the power of the CPU and how much it's running. And usually it's done to control heat. So if your your cooler, your CPU heatsink isn't running fairly well, then you end up underclocking a little bit. Uh, it's, you do suffer in performance usually, which is why I suggest not doing it, but in a case where your CPU usage might be um, high and you might have a lot of heat, then maybe it's worth trying. But I'm not going to get into that anyways. Um, I just don't feel like doing it. Um, so without further ado, um, the next things to show you will be the differences between DirectX 11 and DirectX 12, and I'll show like a side-by-side -side comparison that way we can see it in, in more or less real time. They're not completely uh, at the same spots in some areas, but they are in the same um, map, which is a new ice map, or new winter map rather. And so um, at least it'll be comparable. So we'll see you on that side. So here's the comparison uh, between DirectX 11 and DirectX 12. 12 being on the left, 11 being on the right. So right in this spot here, you'll see that the CPU has jumped to 91% on DirectX 11, and on DirectX 12, it was just above mid-70s. This lighting spot, every time I hit it, I did a couple of different test runs, but every time I hit it on DirectX 11, it was in the 90s, whereas in DirectX 12, it was in the mid-70s, maybe a little bit higher than the mid-70s, which is awesome. And there's that famous uh, communication error again. Um, I can't blame this on Capcom. Like I said, I have satellite internet. So <laughs> you can imagine how the latency is on that. We get disconnections often. But I just wanted you to notice the differences between the two. Like right now, uh, internet around the water in DirectX 11, we're at 70%, a little bit higher than 70%. Whereas on 12, we're maybe just barely breaking 70%. Uh, where we can see on DirectX 11, we're in the high 70s to 80s at times. So it does make a pretty big difference in terms of CPU usage, or at least it has for me. So the last resort fix that I really have for you guys likely isn't actually much of a fix, uh, but it's worth trying anyways. So for all of you who haven't already, um, there's a little option in Steam, when you go to Monster Hunter World, you'll go under Properties, you'll go under Verify Integrity of Game Files. Now, what this does is it scans through uh, the Monster Hunter folder in Steam apps, and it identifies if all the files are correct and all the files are there. Usually, uh, it will be. In this case, I'm pretty sure it won't fix the issue. But in the event that it does, go ahead and try it. And instead of canceling like I did, um, just run it through. And maybe it'll say, oh, you know, uh, we've acquired or we've downloaded whatever files. Uh, hopefully it works for you guys.
you know, one thing you guys will be happy to know is that Capcom is planning to fix the high CPU usage issue. They know about it and they've actually made a notification here of an upcoming patch. So they've said, issue summary. We've noticed that an issue resulted in an unusually high level of CPU utilization during active gameplay. The upcoming patch, which should be released in the coming days, should improve CPU utilization. Please note that the upcoming patch will update Monster Hunter World Iceborne to version 10, 12, and 1. Our sincerest apologies or our sincere apologies for any inconvenience this issue may have caused. So, what I believe, I don't think this is specific to just Monster Hunter World Iceborne. I think they're just going to send out a patch for everyone because, like I said, users of the base game are being affected as well, which they should patch as well. I, I don't think it's just Iceborne and Iceborne users or the people who own the DLC. That said, some good news. So hopefully these uh, temporary fixes are able to get you through until this patch comes, which according to Capcom is in the next few days. No specific timeline, but hopefully soon enough. So if you like what you saw today, drop a thumbs up, leave a like, comment, if you have any questions, by all means, shoot. And um, hit the bell notification. That's pretty much it. Take her easy.